people, you know, watching tonight will really relate to that. I mean, the rent, we know about the issue there. When you talk about energy prices, um, the idea from Sinn Féin that the, it's a piecemeal approach to what's happening here. Um, the action being taken by government, is it just going to let things bubble away or are you going to make those big steps that people would say are needed at this point? Well, first of all, it's very significant to see the action the government has taken on fuel, on electricity, on prescriptions, on childcare, on a third level. And next week, the government uh, is sitting down to look oh, again please. across okay. all departments uh, to, to see what more but can be done. But there is an acknowledgement at government level that yes. this, is, and this, be, this is an emergency let's situation let's honest, when you're, you're calling cabinet ministers in to you know, come up with proposals. Let's be honest, what you're hearing from, from with the greatest response respect is fairyland talk. There is no government that can t tell world gas prices to go down or world oil, oil prices to go down. That is not within our power. Not even North Korea would, would be seeking to do that. You know, world gas prices are set elsewhere. So what we have to do is ease the pressure on families of some of these impacts. And that's what we're doing. And we're looking right across and targeting people with the lowest, lowest income. The fuel scheme is what now is 924 euros we're providing. If you add the other supports, you're, you're, you're up to 1,600 in utility supports for the most are vulnerable families. Are you talking families. about schemes that are currently in place, not and which were not increased, which were just okay. increased uh, in All the right. last couple are of months. Are you going months. to? Is it going to be? To, I mean, one of the criticisms about this is that you know, say for example, that 100 euro credit, that that's universal, that maybe the measures that are being you know considered and, and should be targeted, targeted at those who need it most, targeted at those for whom this has a disproportionate effect on their lives. So it doesn't really affect everyone in the same way as we know. That's correct, and that's why the fuel scheme is targeted, uh, the, the childcare scheme was targeted, the prescriptions were targeted. But the, the situation with the electricity thing, and it's, it's, it's worth remembering, that electricity users pay 400 million in contributions to help the transition to renewables. So every electricity consumer is contributing that over and above the cost of delivering the electricity to help okay. us get to renewables. Just on the issue, so to give them the a break of, is not, on, on is not fuels, unreasonable. That's one of the big complaints, you know, people are filling up um, at the pump and, and they're really feeling it in the pocket. Are there going to be, and we know that we charge a very high VAT rate compared to other countries, um, will there be changes to that? No, I don't expect that overall fuel prices are something that you can change. What we have to do is help people make well, the, the transition. Well, the tax take is very high yeah, in this no, country I think on we, that. But, but is there think... pressure coming from your coalition's partners on that? No, one? I think the pressure is now to, to try and mainstream the switch to electricity, to ele oh. electric vehicles, is the, is, is the way. They're increasing so in their range and we can... You okay, know, that's want that's get, where we get a permanent get, move away from the use Matt of fossil Carthy fuels. Get in on that. You know, so basically, if you are in a position to be in a, able to purchase a brand new car and if you live in an area that actually has access to electronic vehicle um, charging points, which isn't the case for the vast majority of workers and families, then this government will hand you in and around 5,000 no, euros. But you, but if you, you want are, to, if you if want you if you are, you annoying, are, you if are you, opposing you carbon tax. I'm, we can't, I'm, we can't I'm, I'm address... Sorry, Richard, if you the, just let McCarthy finish this point. But he, was, he was speaking him. directly to me, so I I'm answering I wasn't actually, I was speaking directly to, to those just, workers if could just let and him families finish and point viewers and who tonight in. are really struggling, who are wondering how they're going to make it to the end of the, the month. And the only measure for those people who have no option but to drive... Um, petrol or diesel cars that this government are actually planning to bring in for them is to increase their prices even further come May, on top of whatever happens globally. That, to me, is fundamentally unfair. And if carbon taxes actually worked, if hiking the prices of petrol and diesel actually worked, and then over the past six months we would have seen a drastic reduction in car ownership. It hasn't happened because precisely because the public transport options and other alternatives aren't in place. So let's get real. Let's talk about what people today in the here and now are actually going through. This is a government that is able to, at a stroke of a pen, decide that one individual post is worth eighty one thousand okay. euro um, in additional yeah, so salary. Yet yeah. when it comes to being told yeah. for months and months and months about the hardship that families are going to, this week they've decided that they might have a conversation among government departments next week rather than actually put in place the measures okay. that have actually been I want, put before I want to them let Richard back in occasions. there just to respond to that. The truth is that every cent of carbon tax is used to help people to make the changes that they need. It's going into fuel scheme, it's going into the warmer homes 
scheme, which is a 100% grant for people who are either on the uh, working family payment or on the fuel scheme, they get a 100% grant to um upgrade their, for their homes. That isn't just relief today, that's a saving of a €1,000 so for the rest that of their lives. About freezing, about freezing the carbon tax increase come no, May. There no, won't be. You, we you don't made, envisage a change on that. We have made a commitment that we are going to have our reliance on uh, carbon-producing fuels over the next uh, by 2030. Well, that doesn't and help. that cannot be achieved. It will not be achieved by Sinn Féin by opposing every measure that seeks to do that. That won't carbon help tonight. Those families this that are wondering okay. whether or not they are paying their childcare costs or okay. their rent or yes. their petrol costs no because they can't afford all Sorry, I'll have to stop you there. We just don't want to penalise ordinary people. All right, Richard, but very, very briefly, there's also talk about a, a, a proposal or, you know, a, a want from opposition to raise social welfare payments. Uh, you do, would you agree that's a good thing? You know, Absolutely. Again, the Cornerstone was saying, you know, it's not going to help people who have mortgages to pay. We certainly have to expand uh, eligibility for the fuel allowance dramatically for low-paid workers, for huge numbers of pensioners, probably the majority of pensioners who aren't entitled to it uh, at the moment. Uh, the social welfare increases, but also wages, by the way, for workers. We have hundreds of thousands of workers in this country on low pay, one of the highest levels of low pay anywhere in Europe. But I just want to respond to Richard's uh, point about Fairyland and all the rest of it. Energy prices in this country are 15% higher on average than the rest of Europe. So there is plenty of latitude. Uh, for the government to reduce down the actual unit price uh, of energy. Uh, and much of the taxes that he's talking about, the PSO levy and so on, uh, that ordinary people pay, that does not benefit them in terms of their ability to uh, insulate their homes. Tenants don't have any control over their ability to insulate homes, whether they're public or private, and huge numbers of low-paid workers simply do not have the resources to insulate their homes because the gap between the grants and, and the cost of retrofitting your home is tens and tens of thousands of euros that working people don't and that's have. why Eamon Ryan will be introducing this major retrofitting wave very shortly. Okay, we'll wait we and see. see what happens with yeah. that.